Greetings, everybody. I am Lobo, and welcome to Luna. This is episode 181 of my Minecraft survival series, and today we're going to be making our way back over to WARF, the Wolfen's Aquatic Research Facility, which is a project that's been ongoing for a while now, but it is slowly but surely nearing completion. We just have two more builds left to do over here before we can call this thing done. Like the final one, the one we're not going to be working on today is like the villager housing area, which is going to be here in the back. And then the build we are going to be working on today is going to be a build that does double duty, housing both the Wolfen's Aquatic Research Facility logistics and intelligence sections here in the front. Now, if you take a look at Wharf, you can kind of see what this build is turning into, right? We're using the same block palette for everything, so that way, even though all these buildings are separate buildings on top of this platform, they look like one cohesive build, right? Also, the layout to Wharf is symmetrical. It's symmetrical. I don't want it to be completely symmetrical, though, so, so we're going to kind of shake things up a little bit as we build out today's project down here. Like, we're not changing up the actual layout of Wharf, but I do want some protruding areas, some kind of like weird odds and ends sticking out. I think I think this front build should be smaller than the rest of these builds out here. So if we're approaching Warf from Luna, uh, you know, all the builds back here are more clearly visible, right? I think the main structure of today's build will be very similar to this, actually. Uh, and all the other stuff we we're talking about, the messy stuff, that's going to be the details, right? So, yeah, we're going to be walking kind of this fine line today between cohesion and messiness, I guess. Oh, and contrary to the past couple times we built over here at Wharf, I'm not going to be turning down our kelp farm today. We're going to see how it goes running at full speed while we build. Because I think thanks to those changes we made last time, we're no longer storing up item entities and lag, which is a great thing. Uh, now, DD is, DD is of course already in place. DD's ready to go. So let's go ahead and put on a little bit of music and get the general structure of this building in. Welcome back, everybody. Ow. The main structure of the logistics slash intelligence building is now complete. So we go ahead and take a quick walkthrough of this place before we actually start building anything else. Actually, let's start over here. Let's start over here, because this is the beginning, right? This is how we actually enter Warf. You see, I do plan to install an Elytra landing pad over here, kind of overhanging the water, and this will be how we actually get into Warf, right? That means this right here will be Warf's main entrance. And look at it, so grand, a fitting grand <laughs> entrance to Warf. Uh, yeah, I meant to actually put up some little stone brick walls on the corners here just to kind of like flush those out a little bit. We'll, we'll do that a little bit later. Because uh, as I said, details still need to be added, right? The interior is nowhere near done, uh, but we will get around to that in this episode hopefully as well. Uh, the exterior is a little bit more fleshed out, but there's going to be stuff we add to that also. Uh, but yeah, I do have the like general layout of the insides of this building done, right? So we'll have like, you know, a couple of different rooms for the intelligence section over here. I may actually end up connecting these two rooms. I'm not quite sure yet. Uh, and over here, this will be the logistics section. And this is intended to be just like a big kind of warehouse type dealie. Uh, I got a little closet over here. I don't know, but we saw cleaning supplies or something in there. Because we do need to add to the lore of this place, right? So if we're thinking logistics, right? We not only need to store stuff in this warehouse type area, we also need to figure out how we're going to actually be bringing supplies into Wharf from Luna, right? 
So how I'm thinking we're going to start is by adding a loading dock to the outside of this platform, kind of overhanging the water, because eventually there will be, you know, supply ships coming in from Wolfen's laboratory, carrying supplies over to Wharf. Those supplies will get offloaded from the ship to the loading dock where the logistics team will take over, take inventory, kind of get everything sorted out from there, right? Because they need to make sure that the villagers that are going to be living over here and make sure their, their needs are met and make sure that Wharf has everything it needs to keep operations running smoothly. Ha, <laughs> smooth. Speaking of smooth, I meant to start building in that last clip that I realized I brought over prismarine brick stairs rather than prismarine stairs, which is what I needed. Look at this. Raining. Raining. I think we talked about last episode how bad the weather is over here in Luna. You know what? We're going to be talking a little bit more about the weather a little bit later, but uh, right now we're working on the loading dock, so I do need to figure out just exactly how, how wide this loading dock is going to be. I mean, I guess it would make sense to just have this run the entire width or length one of those of the logistics section of this building, right? So where exactly does that bring us is the question. All right, so yeah, about right here to this corner. All right, so that kind of works out. Uh, and this is going to be where we start adding those protruding sections, that messiness. I am breaking all kinds of blocks I don't mean to break. Oh my goodness, I just realized I didn't bring over, <laughs> didn't bring over the blocks I wanted. Oh my, smooth, smooth, Lobo. <laughs> All right, so I think at this point I am prepared. I think I have what I need. I do need to go ahead and harden a little bit of concrete before we actually get around to, you know, building stuff. Oh, oh, uh oh. <laughs> no, let me let me back up. Let me back up. Ah! I know I know how to play this game. I, uh, I don't know I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> oh my goodness. Ridiculous. Oh. Yep, nothing to see here. Note to self, um, feel free to cut out those last clips from the episode because there is a much easier way to do this. <laughs> so, picking up where we left off, I want to go ahead and add a black and yellow safety stripe around the perimeter of the loading dock. That way, you know, none of our logistics specialists kind of misstep and plummet off the edge because obviously that wouldn't be great for them. It wouldn't be great for me and it wouldn't be great for liability purposes either. Um, but yeah, since we do know what the perimeter of the loading dock is going to be, we can go ahead and start extending the wharf platform accordingly and just get the basic structure of this thing built up. And that should do it. All right, so we'll have a little speed bump right over here, you know, just for safety purposes. That way, if anybody's like cruising along, not paying attention, they won't go around the edge. Or at least they'll, they'll, you know, hit a couple bumps before they do. But now that we have the loading dock done, we need to figure out how we're going to get supplies into the warehouse from the loading dock. And I think a couple bay doors will probably be in order. And these are intended to be kind of like the overhead sectional types of bay doors that kind of, you know, roll up from the ground, right? And I think to start off with, I need another piece of redstone up there. I think to start off with, um, I'm going to go ahead and use these iron trapdoors to see if we can get that effect. Um, I don't know that this is going to be a good use of my iron. <laughs> I don't know uh, because it's kind of expensive, just these doors, right? Uh, but we'll see what we actually think of it, see if it's actually worth it or if I want to cheap out on it and just go with some kind of wood. Um, yep. Acacia it is. I just don't think the iron's worth it for the added expense. Or maybe birch. I think birch is probably what I'm going to roll with because that offers a little bit more, more block variation and it kind of, you know, separates these from our shutters, right? I think, I think birch. I think we're going to roll with birch. Now, moving on to the interior, the last thing we really need to do in here in order to have a completed room that we can finally move stuff into is get a ceiling in place. And I think that should just about do it. So we will be doing something up here in this section a little bit later. Uh, but yeah, we have the, the room itself finished for the most part. And also, check out this view, right? Logistics crew got it made. This is the place to be at sunset, the loading dock. Man. Now, as far as our cargo goes, I've seen people use beehives as boxes and they do make great boxes but we need honeycomb for that. So I guess the question is now, how do I get honeycomb? All right, well, that's easy enough. We just shear our bee nest using a campfire underneath and that lets us get honeycomb. All right, so that's that's fairly, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, sir. 
Excuse me. Uh, and I, I will eventually get, like, an actual, like, B area to where we can, you know, more easily acquire this stuff. But, I mean, it's not a huge priority as of yet. And also, uh, I, I don't know where I'm going to put it. I have to give that a little bit more thought as well. Uh, you're not going to get mad if I break your flower, are you? No, okay, good. Great. Perfect. Oh, but there is a sudden uptick in B activity. <laughs> I don't think I like that. All right, I, we're okay. We're okay. I think, I hope. And then what we could do is go ahead and start adding a few little pallets out here to kind of, you know, dress up the loading dock a little bit, make it look like there's a little bit more stuff going on out here. Uh, and we don't need the, the safety stripe on this side because we're not afraid to walk into the wall, right? Well, I mean, maybe I should be, but for, for the most part, for most people, you know, you're not just going to walk into a wall. Now, I've built a couple of these pallets so far, but maybe we can go ahead and do this one together. So I'm not just using beehives for our cargo. I also want to use some barrels just to add a little bit of variety to it. And we also want to add a little bit of variety in the direction these things are facing as well. All right, then we'll go ahead and throw our beehives in here. Um, and this should... Uh, I want the openings facing outward. So this would then have to be placed like that. And then we can go ahead and do this one like this. And then this one has to be facing the opposite direction like that. Yeah, yeah, that looks much better. All right, now we can go ahead and tie this thing down, make it secure using some rails over the top just like this. And there we go. That is that is our pallet. Now the question I'm asking myself is, how did these pallets get up here from the supply ships? What an amazing view! Whoa, that's what happens when we don't pay attention to the caution tape. Anyway, um, we're going to have a little crane protruding from the top of this house, sitting over our logistics building right here. And that's how we're going to be loading and unloading cargo. And I think about right here is probably as good a spot as any four. Let's just go ahead and see how it looks. Kind of, you know, more centered on the roof, right? Yeah, I think that'll work. Problem is, though, that we can't actually see anything from up above our roof, at least at that angle. So what I think we're going to do is have our crane perch atop a tower. And we're going to have the operator at the top of the tower operating that crane. And he needs to have good visibility. I mean, you know, he's going to have a spotter down here on the loading dock and everything like that. But he needs to actually be able to see what he's doing. So I think maybe coming up to about this height should do it. And this is going to be good because it's going to let us add a little bit of vertical height to our build, right? Which is good because it's not going to be like, you know, obtrusive or anything like that. It's going to still allow us to see the builds behind it. Now, the actual tower is going to be pretty plain. I don't want to use prismarine in it, but, I mean, that is that is a lot of stone brick. Maybe cobble. I've gone through and replaced all the stone brick walls with cobblestone walls, and I'm hoping that's a little bit better. It's, it's just gray. I mean, <laughs> it's just gray. Maybe acacia. Maybe acacia or a combination of acacia and cobblestone walls. That way we add a little bit of color to it, but it also looks more structurally sound. Now, as for the crane itself, I think I want to have it go kind of, you know, out and up, like at a diagonal. I mean, it would be simpler, I suppose, to have it go like horizontal with the cable hanging down. But I think having it go out and up would offer... Just a little bit more vertical height, first of all, right? Which is something we always want to add. Like, we want to have different dimensions to our build. But I think, also, it's it's just going to make it look more lively, you know? Make it look, you know, having it come out at more of an angle is going to make it look more lively. Uh, we'll see if we can actually accomplish that. If not, then there's always the option of just going horizontal in case it doesn't end up looking great. Um, I think I'm going to use, like, uh, probably the, uh, what do you call them? The grindstones as, like, pulleys and stuff like that. And we've got the horizontal chains now that we can use for the actual cables and stuff. I think it should be interesting. It should be interesting at the very least. And there we go. And then look at that. There goes the sky. Wow. As soon as I start recording. Great. Great timing, Rain. We're going to talk about the weather in a little bit. But, yeah, we got the, the crane done over here. Uh, I'm liking it. You know, I made it orange to kind of stand out because this is kind of a focal point of Wharf. We use the horizontal chains here my first time using them in this world. And I, I'm overall pretty happy with the way it actually turned out. I've got Didi up there kind of double-checking my work, making sure everything's operational. Hey, Didi, how's everything looking up there? Adequate. Excellent. Excellent. Adequate is what I always shoot for. Thanks. 
So now that the crane's done, there's just a couple more little things I want to do to finish off the exterior of this building. One of those things is putting a protective dome around some of our sensitive equipment here to kind of protect it from the weather because the weather in Luna and its surrounding areas is just terrible. It's constantly storming and all that stuff. So, you know, I was thinking maybe we could put like kind of a, a dome around this, like a half sphere surrounding this thing just to make sure it doesn't get damaged, right? And I know what you're thinking. Warf is run by Wolfen's Laboratory, who are the bad guys, and why would we want to make sure that their equipment is 100% operational at all times? Uh, it's because I've been assured that this is, you know, for the benefit of Luna. The intelligence they gather, it's, it's not for any malevolent purposes, right? They're going to be gathering weather data or, you know, monitoring incoming and outgoing craft and stuff like that. They weren't really too specific on it. You know, they kind of flip-flop back and forth between those two things. Uh, but, you know, they seem sincere, okay? Oh my goodness, I leave for two seconds. Next thing I know, it's zombie noises. Zombie noises everywhere. Get get away from here. Go away. All right. Ah! <laughs> Now this is going to be kind of interesting for me, like right now I'm getting the base for the dome in, right? Like it's going to extend from these full blocks and go around to kind of encase this little radar antenna looking thingy right here. Uh, but I don't have a whole lot of experience building like full on like semi spheres in Minecraft, like circles I do all the time, round stuff, yeah, as far as, it, as long as it's flat I do it all the time. Like we've done some domed roofs but nothing like perfectly round. Uh, so I want to go ahead and get some practice on this because it's a smaller dome, you know, it's, a, it's on a small smaller scale, uh, but if it works out, we might end up building some larger ones elsewhere. Uh, too far away from my jump boost. So I think what I'm going to do is like rough out the shape of this dome using slime blocks. That way, once I get the, the glass I'm going to use to, to actually build it, like we can just come in here and just like break and then replace each of the slime blocks with a piece, piece of glass, right? I'll probably end up using white stained glass, I think, uh, just to kind of make it stand out a little bit. But yeah, that's one of the great things about slime blocks is like you can just break them with the block that you're replacing them with. Super easy. And now that I think about this, this probably actually won't really be that hard because it's just going to be like a series of circles and semicircles, right? Because we're just going to go like a little bit smaller as we go in with the, the circles that we're building. Theoretically. So just to give you an idea of what I'm doing, I'm it's basically just constructing a series of concentric circles, each lower and lower and wider and wider, right? Now I do still need to kind of clean this up a little bit, kind of fix some like odd places and stuff like that. But overall, uh, it's coming together. Uh, so I guess once I get done with this, we can go ahead and, and put the glass in there and just see how it looks. And there we go. We now have a protective dome surrounding this sensitive piece of equipment. And overall, I'm pretty happy with the way it looks. I think just the look of this, like adds a lot to this roof, having this like kind of dome shape coming out of it. Uh, and we have this facing directly towards Luna, which doesn't really make too much sense if you're monitoring weather and marine traffic, right? You know, I wonder, I wonder if Wolfen's Laboratory actually meant for me to build this around this right here. That would make a little bit more sense as far as what they say they're monitoring, wouldn't it? Anyway, the last thing I need to do as far as the exterior of this building goes is get a little Elytra landing pad built up over here. Kind of hanging precariously over the edge of the platform, but we'll make sure it's well supported. And once I get these last couple blocks in here, we'll be able to see the rough size and shape of this. Kind of how it's going to look, right? Uh, <laughs> got blocks everywhere, excuse me. Probably should clean this up. But overall, the construction of this is going to be pretty simple. We're basically using the same block palettes that we use on the structures over here at Wharf, just to kind of maintain that sense of cohesion, right? And as far as the landing pad itself goes, well, we built these before at Wolfen's Laboratory's Quarantine District and the Eclipse Outpost, and we're basically going to follow the same design. So we'll just go ahead and lay down a bunch of concrete powder. We got a big E here at the center, kind of marking out this is where you land with your elytra. And then we'll throw a layer of glass over top of it. And lastly, I think we'll add a bit of lighting to the perimeter of this. That way it's clearly visible in case we're flying over here at nighttime. So we'll probably do something like, bye slime block, you were great. Bye. Uh, we'll probably do something like that. All right, so let's go ahead and see how this feels. Now we have an official way to leave Wharf. We just take off from the Elytra landing pad. We also have an official way to enter Wharf as well, which is going to be much better than just, you know, landing anywhere all willy-nilly. That's a hazard to everybody. So we spot our landing, we come in, and boom, nice and smooth. I like it. I like it. All right. Really? 
Really? Okay. It's raining again. Perfect. But at this point, I think we can pretty much call it for the exterior of this build. We do, however, still have an entire interior left to do. We have to get the warehouse built for the logistics section. We have the entirety of the intelligence section left to build. So we'll go ahead and call Didi on over here. And after that, after we're done building, maybe we'll contact Wolfridge to see if he's made any progress on Didi's old hard drive, you know, because he's been trying to crack that thing for a while now and I'm, I'm curious to see it is unlikely Mr. Wilkins will have made any progress unlike what do you mean the hard drive can only be read by a proprietary Wilkins laboratory system the advanced decryption widget for appropriate robotic entities the advanced what I mean Wolford's a smart guy he should be able to crack that negative no okay well that is that is quite the setback uh, you want to break the news to him? Because <laughs> I don't. Negative. Okay, well that's not helpful. But, uh... You know what, Didi? I don't blame you. Okay, well that's news. That's bad. Um... So I guess while we're figuring out how to deal with that... We'll just go ahead and, and put on a little bit of music and get started with... You know, all this stuff that needs to be done. Welcome back, everybody, I guess. We have another quadrant of Wharf now complete. And we'll go look at it in a minute. We will. But right now, I have the unfortunate task of telling Wolfred what we learned from Didi just a few moments ago. Oh, I am not looking forward to this. But, I mean, there's stuff to look forward to once we get back to Wharf, right? Because I still have to show you guys the interior. There's more to it than what you saw in the time lapse because I had to go grab some random stuff. My world seems to be having a little bit of trouble loading in, but that's okay. All right, so we're just going to go ahead and make our way in here. Uh, DD should be right there. Perfect. All right, so I wrote Wolfred this note that we're going to transmit to him. It says, Wolfred Wolfens, co-founder Law, good buddy. Hey, how's it going? I know you've been working hard to on extracting information from DD's old hard drive and you haven't had much success. I may know why. I was just informed the drive is unreadable without an advanced decryption widget for appropriate robotic entities, which I am told means only decoy robots are capable of reading and relaying the data. DD says it's too dangerous to install on any of your systems and could lead to unwanted consequences. This is quite the problem, but I'm sure we'll be able to come up with a solution, so please don't take this setback too hard. Lobo. Hopefully that's that's not too 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 harsh. I don't know. We'll see. We'll go ahead and send this to him via the interdimensional inanimate object transmitter and uh wait for his reply. <laughs> I mean, 
Oh, uh oh, oh, back up, back up, Didi. Oh my goodness, that's unfortunate. Wow, this thing just malfunctions, doesn't it? Now we have no way of contacting Wolfred. I don't know if you even got that message. Oh my goodness, well, maybe, maybe next episode we can pay him a visit and just kind of, you know, inform him in person. That's probably the best way to do this anyway. All right, uh, I need to, I need to clean this up. Well, I mean, no harm done. A uh, little, little bit of harm done. You know, we rebuilt, you know, there's still some slight discoloration and stuff. And this, unfortunately, is all that remains of the interdimensional inanimate object transmitter. That in the instruction booklet. It's just a shame, you know, it's a, it's a real shame that we got such a malfunctioning piece of equipment. But, I mean, there's nothing we can do about it now. Let's head on back to Warf. Despite the setbacks, though, we have made a pretty significant amount of progress, at least over here at Wharf. I just want to go ahead and fly around the exterior of it real quick and give you guys a good view as to what we've done so far, because over the past few episodes, we have made a ton of progress here. It's coming together. This place is coming together. Yeah, that looks like a little, little snow globe. A little snow globe with a metal Christmas tree in it. I mean, it is December. We count that as our Christmas build, right? <laughs> now I'm just playing. We're going to do an actual Christmas tree somewhere else. I think I do have the perfect spot picked out for it, but we'll talk about that more a little bit later. But check this place out. Wharf is coming together. Whoa, coming in hot. Oh, nope, no, overshot. Overshot my landing a little bit. Let's pretend I landed up here on the Elytra landing pad where I was supposed to land. And then uh, we'll go and I'll say, you guys have seen the entire exterior, right? Let's go ahead and tour the interior now. Uh, so we got, you know, various hallways and corridors built up, obviously. And this is how we get out onto the actual wharf platform. So there's not too far to travel from the Elytra landing pad out to the actual wharf platform, right? Uh, and then we can go ahead and go a little bit further down the hall. This is where we have our intelligence section right through here. So, as I said, I added a couple little odds and ends to this uh, that you might not have seen during the time lapse. A little server room back here. Uh, we have some various workstations for our intelligence crew. Some semi-private cubicles back here. So that way these guys can get some work done in peace. You know, they can analyze information and pass it on to other people who do other stuff with that information. Because intelligence, right? Gathering information, all that stuff. Over here, we have our logistics section, and we do have a couple forklifts in here. Probably two more than we actually need. I mean, I think these guys could have got by with the, maybe a pallet jack or something like that. But hey, it's Wolfen's Labs, right? We also added a little bit of uh, lighting over here and just some other warnings so that way nobody saunters off the edge. Because now even I know. Even I know not to go that far out. And then, of course, we have our warehouse with some odds and ends, some storage and stuff like that. Um, and, oh, if you're worried about the clearance these forklifts have, like going through our bay doors over here, there's plenty of room. There's plenty of room. I mean, it might not look like it, but all you got to do is flip the doors all the way open and then boom. No problem entering and exiting, right? Uh, I, I like these shelves. I like these shelves that we made. We added a few of them in here. I'll go ahead and give you a quick quick look at those and we also have a little bit of extra storage room over here uh and upstairs we haven't gone upstairs yet so let's go ahead and check out the crane this is how we actually make our way up to the crane so we gotta climb this little ladder right here this is where the crane operator will go and he'll just make his way into the little control room right here where he has excellent visibility and he can operate this thing he can rotate it he can raise and lower it you know all the stuff that a crane operator would need to do right Anyway, I do think that is all the time we have for today, so I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, please be sure to hit that little thumbs up button. That would mean a whole lot to me. And if you want to see more, please remember to subscribe. But as always, I just want to thank you guys for hanging out today. I deeply appreciate it. And until next time, I am Lobo, and I will see you guys later.